Let's talk more about this case with Cheryl Dorsey. She's a retired Los Angeles Police Department sergeant and HLN legal analyst, Joey Jackson. Uh, Cheryl, first of all, what do you see on, on that video? I mean, what do you make of the officer's conduct there? Well, Randy, what I see is an officer who's drunk with power. I see an officer who violated policy and procedure during that traffic stop, and he lived to offend again in the case of Sam DeBose. You know, when we see incidents that make national news, I'm always of the belief that this is not the first time that this officer has conducted himself in an outrageous and egregious manner, and that's what we have here. He has no authority to do the things that he's doing, yet he continues. And, and Joey, when it comes to the death of Sam DeBose, the other video that we've seen, um, if this officer wanted you to hire or wanted to hire you to defend him, I mean, does he have an argument that he was afraid for his life and, and was about to be dragged or was even dragged by DeBose's car? argument to make and obviously as a defense attorney we try to make arguments every day so let's talk about what the defense I think will focus on I see this very much as what we call a mitigation case Randy and what I mean by that there are some cases you go into court and you have a shot of winning and you prepare accordingly there are those other cases where it doesn't appear as though you're gonna win but you could mitigate and lessen the damage and I think what the attorneys will focus on for him is the fact that Case law relating to police officers clearly says, United States Supreme Court, that they have split seconds to make decisions. And sometimes those decisions are fatal and sometimes they're awful and other times they exercise bad judgment. And I think what they'll attempt to do is knock out the murder charge because that carries 15 to life. Manslaughter, more like sudden you know, passion, heat of quarrel, even anger, that gets you to three to 11 years, which is a win. There's no question that procedure, protocol, so many things went wrong, so many things escalated so quickly and to some extent the defense has to own that because if you just say you know what he was justified he shot he feared for his life he was really being dragged like his report said even though we don't see it on the video he was really being run over by the car even though we don't see it on the video it's disingenuous you lose the jury however if you make the argument you know what there was protocol may not have been followed he had to make a split second decision his judgment was off it was bad perhaps it was a sudden quarrel heat of passion it gets you three to eleven it preserves his yeah. life Randy he's 25 years old so Cheryl there's got to be a reason that some traffic stops go right and some don't go right I mean what should a police officer do if someone decides to run away during a traffic stop so it doesn't end the way that Samuel DeBose's traffic stop ended well, you know, if since we're common, Randy, everyone would have it, and so we can't teach it. And we understand as police officers that people are not going to be happy with the service that we provide. You're not required to like a citation. You're not required to be happy that I'm taking you to jail. And so if a suspect, a driver, alleged perpetrator tries to drive off, you have their identification, you have the license plate, hopefully you've already radioed in your location and your stop, you get them another time. They live, you live. But to say that I'm scared of every black person behind the wheel of a car and therefore I get to use deadly force is unacceptable. This officer had an affirmative responsibility to ask for backup, to de-escalate the situation. There was no reason to want to have Mr. DuBose get out of the car other than this officer wanted to show him that I am the authority and I'm going to compel you just because I'm in uniform. And you don't get to do that. Mm -hmm. And Joey, let's talk about the charges because they were they were filed uh, very, very quickly. Was it the proper charge, do you think, in your opinion? Sure. You know, what happens, Randy, is that the prosecutor has an obligation to charge anything that they believe they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt. And when you examine that video, the prosecutor believes that it was a purposeful killing, that things went south and he shoots him, he shoots him in the head and it's over. And so if you think you can sustain that charge, you charge it, you bring it before the grand jury. Let's be mindful that in Ohio there are 15 members of the grand jury, 12 of which have to vote to indict, and the standard is there's a reasonable cause to believe a crime was committed and he committed it. So that's a far cry from a trial jury, Randy, where it's beyond a reasonable doubt. But I think the charges are appropriate, whether that charge of murder will stick with the jury is going to be up to how it's interpreted by them in terms of this officer's actions and the reasonableness or unreasonableness of them. All right. Thank you both. Joey Jackson, Cheryl Dorsey, good to see you. Thank you, Randy. Take thank care. Thank you. Ahead, members